Hello, my letter lovers. This is No Number Man, and welcome to this new video. In today's video, I would like to talk about uniform variables for in your shaders. So, uniform variables for in your shaders, I've opened my shaders here in Visual Studio. Uniform variables are almost just like normal variables, except you can change their value from outside of the shader. So from inside of your normal program. So let's just say that I would want to have a saturation variable for my color, right? So let's say I want to have a saturation value like this. So when the saturation value is zero, my red, green, and blue will all be set to zero and I get a very nice black image. While if I set it to 1, my red, green, and blue will be equal to their default value. And if I set it higher, then I get a much more saturated image, right? I get a much brighter red, green, and blue. That would be something that would be pretty cool. But of course, if I would do something here, I could, of course, do something like, well, uh, float s equals 1.0. And that would work, right? That would work. Only, I wouldn't be able to change this S value. Now, of course, of course, I could put some sort of S value here in my vertex data. But then I would have to specify a saturation value for every single vertex. And if I wanted to change the saturation value of a vertex, then I would have to change the entire vertex data buffer. Now, that would be a lot of work for really only changing one float value, right? Because I don't want a different saturation value for every vertex. I just want one saturation value for everything. So why would I bother putting all of that work in? Well, it's really just one value. So instead, what we can do is we can use what's called a uniform variable. So let's look at that. We can say uniform float saturation, then I can say that it's just one by default. I believe if you don't use an equal sign here, if you just leave it unassigned like this, it will initialize to zero by default. But we don't really want that because then our image will be black by default. So we want it to be initialized to one, right? That makes sense. Now I can get rid of this S and I can say, well, Let's just put the whole word saturation in here. That will be nice and clear for any readers out there. Always keep your variable names nice and crisp so that everybody knows what you mean. That's always a good idea. So, okay, now we have a uniform float saturation. What now? How do we actually set this uniform saturation from our program? Well, OpenGL has some functions for that. So in here, we create our data, we create some buffers, VAO, we upload everything, and we draw the arrays. Drawing the arrays happens here. Now, of course, our program is already used here. So that's good. We always use our program, our shaders. So somewhere between using our program and actually drawing our scene, we have to set the uniform, right? Now, let's set it before we work on our buffers. And of course, just to be clear, creating and deleting and then recreating your VAOs every time that you render a frame is very inefficient, of course, but this is just as an example. So don't mind this mess here. Okay, let's get to work. So before we can access any uniform, we first need to know what its ID is so that OpenGL can identify it, right? So let's look for that. So gl dot get uniform location. Now, as it says here in the tooltip, returns the location of a uniform variable. So that's exactly what we want. We want that location so that we can pass it to OpenGL and OpenGL can set it for us, can change it to whatever we want it to be. Right, so we first need the program ID for this function. So we have our shader program dot ID, and then we need the name. And the name is very specifically the string of the name of our variable. In our case, saturation. So it needs to be a string called saturation. Exactly like that. Of course, it is capital sensitive. 
So make sure that capitalization is exactly the same and all that. And then it should be able to find that ID. It will return that just like normal. So we can do int uniform saturation is this, right? Now, of course, once you do know the ID of your uniform, you don't really need to ask for it again on the next frame because once OpenGL creates your shaders, the IDs are just set and that's it. They will never change throughout your program. So if you ask for the ID once in your program, then that will always stay the same. So you can really just ask it here in the window.load and that should work perfectly fine. So actually, as a matter of fact, let's put it there. So let's do something like this in saturation right here. And then of course we need to load it inside of window.load. We need to make sure that shader program is loaded. So here we load our program. After that, we can load the saturation. Then we can just load that into a variable like this. Now that we have that, we can start to use it. So what we can do is we can say gl.uniform, and then we have one, two, three, four. We have matrix two, matrix two, three, matrix two, four, matrix three, and so on. Now uniform one is really just for scalar types, which means doubles, floats, integers, long spites, stuff like that. Now that is exactly what we have. If you have something else, then maybe uniform two, three, or four is something for you. So uniform two is just for vector two types. So x, y, as you can see here, x, y, floats, v0, v1, of course, integers, x, y. Uniform three is for vector trees, x, y, z. Uniform four is for vector fours xyzw or even for colors like rgba and matrices are for well matrices so a two is just a two by two matrix two by three is obviously two by three three is three by three and so on for now though we just want a uniform one for our program because we just have a single scalar value of course we need to specify the location so that will be uniform saturation and then we need to specify the value. So let's see, what do we want to pass here as the value? Let's just try 0.5 for now, right? No, you know what? Let's just try 1.0 because that is the default value. Then we'll see what that looks like. So let's just run the program. And then we'll see what the default looks like. And here we go. So we have a nice colored triangle. Great. Now, let's change the value that we pass through here. Let's just say 0.5. Now that means that our R, G and B value should be halved, just cut in two. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. It is a lot darker. Do you see the difference? It's a lot darker. And of course we can make it 0.1. Sure, why not? And here it's almost black now. I'm not even sure if you can even see any color through the compression of my recording software and YouTube. Yeah, and of course 0.0, .0 is absolutely pitch black. There we go. Absolutely pitch black. Good. Now we can also set it to 2.0 and that should give us a very saturated image. Yes, look at that. It's it's getting a bit whitish. See that? If I if I put it to 5, it will be very clear. There we go. Yes. So the middle is just completely white at this point. And the rest is, well, very bright to say the least. Right, so that just works. Now, of course, we just set it once. So we can just put that here. No, nope. enter, paste. We can put it there. And it doesn't work. Oh, I know why it doesn't work. And that is a problem that I have run into a couple times before. And for some reason, I have been struggling with this those times very hard. I just couldn't find what the problem was, but the problem is really quite simple. I hadn't 
use the program yet. I didn't bind the program yet. And then setting the uniform just doesn't work. There we go. Now it does work, right? So always very important before you set a uniform, just make sure that your program is bound because this is just an integer. So once you set a uniform with just an integer as an ID, it will look for the currently bound shader. It will look for that integer index in its own shader uniforms, and then it will set that uniform. So in case you have another shader bound, it will change that uniform of that other shader instead of the shader that you want to. So make sure that the shader that you want to change is bound at that point in time. Right, but what if you do want to change it dynamically? You know, like every frame, you just want to change it a little bit. Now that is totally possible, of course. We can just put it back here. And then, well, let's say that we just want to use like a sign or something. So let's have something like a float counter equals zero. And then of course, after every frame, we just want to say counter plus equals 0.001F, something like that, right? So we are slowly counting upwards. We can even just use one and we can say, well, counter is just uh, an int, right? And we can say plus plus counter after every frame. And then in here, we can set our saturation to something like, well, math.sign of, well, our counter divided by 100, for example. I have one too many braces, brackets here. Of course, counter is an integer and this is an integer, so that will not work out well. Let's make that a float and that should be much better, right? Okay, let's check it out. Now we should see that this changes over time. Aha, so I found the sneaky culprit here. It is a sign. It returns a double. And if you just put a double in this function signature, what it will do is it will select the int double version of uniform one. So you can see it here. It has the int double version now. So it will try to set the double value of uniform saturation. But uniform saturation or saturation is a float, not a double. So it will just not do anything. Right. So we need to cast this to a float. And we just need to make very much sure. Yes, now it will set an int float. Nice. So now it should work. Now that's pretty sneaky. That's maybe a little bit of, of the standard library just toying with us. And it's also a little bit of the OpenTK method overloading toying with us. Okay, there we go. Now that works. Would you look at that? So it's like breathing in and out. Now, of course, the sign does get negative. So we better just add 1.0 F there. So that zero will be our minimal value and not minus one. And then, of course, we'll range between zero and plus two. There we go. It's breathing in and out. Look at how nice that is. Look at how nice that is. So you can get some very nice effects using uniforms. Now, of course, that is not the most important thing they can be used for. What I would say is the most important thing they can be used for is for setting the projection matrices. So of course, what we want to do now or next is we want to, first of all, be able to change the position of our triangle without reconstructing the entire thing, right? Without reconstructing all of the data, we just want to move our triangle around. Now we can easily do that by using a uniform and then just adding some X value to every position, right? It's quite simple. And then of course, we want to project our vertices onto some sort of projection matrix. So we want to have either a 2D or orthogonal projection, and we want to have some sort of perspective projection. One for 2D, one for 3D. But unfortunately, that will be for the next video, because that will involve just a little bit more maths than this one. So I wanted to keep this one nice and simple, just uniforms. Next time, we'll dive into some maths, some nice linear algebra. Oh yeah, my favorite. And then we'll get these projections rolling. And then we can really get started with our game. Because then everything will be in place, really.
So yeah, I hope you guys are just as excited as I am. And well, if you like this video, please leave a like, consider subscribing, and then I will see you all later. Bye-bye.